Oh, what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself now i got a very special interview snippet from an interview i did with none other than cash mace he's a singer songwriter all around artist and his pen game is heavy he calls himself benjamin franklin so that gives you an idea how seriously he takes his writing but in this clip right here it's about the sacrifices he made it's a full story to get a song with tory lanes and it's something you know you might want to keep in mind for yourself there's nuances to it it's the network me i moved out here you know and i ran to somebody i knew from college and um you know he, he hung out around a certain group you know you know how atlanta is atlanta is more you know it's more who you know not what you know yep and uh he hung around a certain group you know he introduced me to some some cool guys man and um so i started hanging out with them and you know we took trips to miami blah blah but well one, come to find out one of them who's a friend of mine now he ended up uh he ended up being you know friends with somebody that's a part of you know tory lane's team gotcha you know and so um, he would always feed him, be like, hey, you need to hear Cash Mace. You need to hear Cash Mace. Hey, he's nice. And so he sent them a, a couple songs. And it was like, oh, bro, it's dope. He was like, oh, yeah, he was, like, they were vibing to it. And he was like, hey, yeah, he's dope, man. We need, to, we need to figure something out. And so, like, that happened, like, a year ago, like, when I first moved here. And um, they came, he came back, like, a month later and was like, yeah, yeah, here's the price. And I was like. Mm, there's no way that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> he came back with the feature price, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, about that. Uh, I don't yeah. know." Yeah. But, um, but that happened. That happened, and um, and then they came back for Winterfest, you know. And that was like in December. Yeah. And um, they came back in December of, of last year, and uh, they we got invited to Winterfest. So we was on. We was backstage. We was on stage with Tori and. Um, it was a good time, man. He, he's, a, he's a cool dude, man. But um, they invited us to that. And then finally, I was like, you know what? I need to figure this out. I'm going to come up with that money. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to come up with it. Because like we, we, end up, we end up going to the club with them, the whole nine. And the person that, was, that, um, that liked my music, that was part of the team that said he could make it happen, he was like, what's up, man? Like, yeah, you want to make it happen? Like, bro. And I was like, yeah, I want to make it happen, whatever. Like, just let me get back to you. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to mm -hmm. make it happen, though, because, like, for me, I believe in myself so much. And, my, and I believe in my pain game. I believe in my talent. And I'm willing to go to the end of the world and back for it. And on top of that, me, I believe one of the most talented artists in the game is Tory Lanez, period. The most ver one of the most versatile artists, one of the most talented artists in the game is Tory. And I was just like, True. Who could I pair up with that I could make a hit with? And I like, it's Tory Lanez. If it's not Drake, Drake's an automatic hit. That's an automatic hit if it's Drake. And obviously Drake's out of reach for a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, I was like, Tory, I was like, if me and Tory get on the track together, it's, it's going to be a smash. It's, it's going to be a definite smash. And so, you know, me, I went out and I tried to, you know, I seeked one sponsor. You know, because I got some friends that do real estate business and things like that. And so, you know, I was just like, hey, bro, um, I came up with a contract with him and was like, hey, you know, if you do this, you know, you get a percentage of this, blah, blah, whatever else. But then the other thing I did was I sold my car. I sold my <laughs> car. I sold my car, bro. I sold my car. I was just like, you know what? Like this, this opportunity, this might be my you know, only opportunity to get a song with him. He was about to go on tour with Drake. And so I was like, you know what? His prices are going to probably go up. They're already giving me, a, you know, you know, uh, kind of a deal off of the muscle, off of the strength. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I got to come up with this. And so for me, yeah. went to the bank. Bank said, um, okay. I <laughs> the car. All right. This car is ours now. And I was like, all right. It's yours. Give me the cash. Yeah. And so, you know, that happened. Um, I hit up the team member and he was like all right come down to miami um we're gonna be in the studio on this day uh let's do it and so you know we popped up me and my team we popped up and um tori was like all right i'll record yours in the next five minutes he was working on a he was working on a song that song he had with tiger he was working on some other stuff but um he was like i'm gonna get to yours like in 10 minutes or something like that literally he listened to the beat for two minutes and when i say this man went in the booth and recorded this verse in five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Done. 
Done. And in my okay. mind, I'm just like, hey, you might want to take a little more time on that. And I just gave you a lot of money. Like, yo, hey, I just, hey, I just gave you my life, bro. Like, hey, I gave like, you everything yo. I have, bro. Like, you don't want to proofread that verse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to go back and do a like an edit or something? Like, I don't know, bro. Like, I just yeah. gave you my life, and you, you took my life in five minutes. <laughs> yo, that's wild. <laughs> but, yeah. was, was it sharp though? Was it was it something like? Yeah, hey, he killed it. I got a little piece on my it's on my page. You know, I got a little piece of it in the studio. Oh yeah, but, um, okay. But uh, nah, he killed it. He killed it. I was like, soon as soon as the beat came on, and I heard him, I was like, smash. Mm -hmm. I already knew. I was like, smash. So the as soon as the, the way he entered the song, I was like, smash. It's over. Word. I mean, that's like he's a, he's a beast, man. He's one of those. I mean, like you said, he's one of the most talented man. Like the the, the pain game, pain game. That yeah. those are. Those artists are different because I mean it's one thing to just do the freestyle thing or whatever, but like he yeah. for real writes. He writes the people who make like who are aren't aren't even in the genre. You know what I mean? That's that's what and that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I was like, that's why I was able to. That's why I that's why I took that chance, bro. Because I was just like, I believe in myself so much, but I was just like, you know what? I want to put myself on somebody on on a song with somebody else that I feel like I'm in that bracket. It's the network. All right, so I hope that clip bought perspective and insight on a really serious thing that a lot of artists go to, a lot of people who are trying to be successful in music go to, and really in life in general. And that's just the sacrifices that are oftentimes necessary to get to where you want. And by any means necessary, it's a real thing. A lot of people say it, but they don't really prescribe to it because they say, oh man, I'm afraid of this happening. I'm afraid of that happening. But at the end of the day, you have to couple by any means necessary with betting on yourself. And that's trusting yourself to be able to move and handle any situation that comes. So if you make some of these sacrifices and decisions, you bet that you can recover from them if necessary, or you bet that you can make the right decisions based on whatever new circumstances come. A lot of people don't have that second size. So even though it sounds good to say they bet on themselves, they don't actually bet on themselves. And here's a perfect example, right? Cash sacrificed his car. Okay, cool. Well, that's just a strategy, right? Or a, or a tactic, that's, that's a bet, period. Betting on yourself is realizing what if sacrificing his car didn't work? What if selling his car didn't work, he still wasn't able to get the sample or the song ends up being trash or just doesn't blow up, right? Betting on yourself looks like still trusting that you're gonna figure it out, even though this one thing that you did didn't actually happen like you wanted it to. What I see from a lot of people is they try these like one-off things or make these big bets or try these huge risks where it seems like, oh, they're betting on themselves, but really they're betting on the outcome. They're betting on that thing because once that doesn't work, they pretty much give up. And the people who are betting on themselves are making those types of decisions again and again, betting on themselves to be able to recover or navigate and handle whatever new situation arises. For me, a perfect example was, I actually had this job years ago, right? Um, and I wanted another job. And it was a company I was applying for, and I sent in my application. I decided I was gonna work at that job like the, in, in a summertime, let's just say the summer, I can't remember the exact month, let's just say May or whatever. And then I sent in an application, didn't get a response. Sent in another application, didn't get a response because I kept on seeing them get like job inquiries up. And then eventually I was like, you know what? All right, cool. They're they not feeling me, they're not feeling my application. I gotta figure out a way to get to these people. I don't even know if someone's actually reading my application or if the right people are seeing it. So with my job, that I currently had, I took a break and I saw, I was in Atlanta by the way, right? I saw that these people, the CEO of the company I wanted to be at, was actually gonna be at a conference in San Francisco. The company was in Atlanta that I wanted to work with, but they were gonna be at a conference in San Francisco, him and some people on this team. I paid to get to that conference in San Francisco, right? And met those people there, some people on the team who were in charge of hiring and things like that, to then come back to Atlanta and I actually got that job. I'm not gonna even go into full details, but I made that jump and hope that it would work out. Met those people there and then was able to actually make that happen where before when I was going the traditional route, 
it just it just didn't happen. And Cash Mace, when you see his full interview, you can check that out on brandmannetwork.com. This dude has made several decisions like that that have worked out. Some of them didn't cost that much money or anything. It just took a certain mentality to approach. You'll see what I mean, especially one of his six figure bets. Well, he made six figures off of that bet as well. Now, two other examples that I got to mention, though, that are that are beautiful examples are Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sylvester Stallone, this dude loved his dog. He bet his dog in trying to make the first Rocky movie happen. And he even got some offers for the Rocky movie, right? For like 100K and he turned those down because he wanted to be in it, which is different. He could have sold it as a writer and they would have got some other movie star to be in it. But he said, nah, I want to be in it. I need to be the star character. And he turned down 100K being homeless. And then they offered him more. They were like, nah. And then they offered him more. He was like, nah. They offered, I can't remember the exact number. They offered him up to like 500, 800 k and he was still saying nah man if i'm not the person in this movie right then i'm not for it and he ended up taking way less front end money just to be the star of the movie and literally that movie sparked his entire career went on to be one of the highest paid movie stars a huge legend in his era even if you don't know who he is you might have heard about the rocky movies and the, the rocky series now that's where creed is creed creed 2 I'm sure you might know those movies. That's all from the Rocky series and he's owner of that as well. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm not gonna even go too deep into this dude's story, but this dude was basically in the army in his country, right? And he was on base and everything. He dipped out the base at nighttime just to go to a bodybuilding competition and then get back, like slip back onto the base hoping that he didn't get discovered. He did get discovered, but he had this dream of being a bodybuilder and he bet on himself to make that happen. If you look at his story, I'll put a link to his story in the description below because he tells it on YouTube and it's not even that long of a video. Trust me, it's a dope inspiration from the Arnold Schwarzenegger snippet to the full interview with Cash Mace. When you look at people who are betting on themselves to get to a certain place, it's not a one off thing. You're constantly betting on yourself again and again and again because all these bets do not work out. I know these are cool, pretty, you know, nice bow tied stories and all that stuff, but they don't always work out. But if you let one not working out deter you from continuing to make certain bets, then you're not betting on yourself. You're just betting on some other type of outcome. You're, you're, you're hoping this advice that you got worked. So you're betting on somebody else or you're betting that these other people pick you and they see you. So you're betting on a moment or, or something that is outside of yourself. Betting on yourself is a constant thing and it's one of the most constant things that I've seen when it comes to people who are successful in the music industry. And it's something that y'all know if y'all been watching my videos enough, I'm huge on myself, which is why, of course, this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.